to the number 29 edition of WWMS. I am Chase Cobra, later joined by our geopolitical friend, Arif Kapoor. And today we have many things to break down, including the best parts of my interview with Raven star defensive tackle, Justin Madden PK. But first, let's start off with our joke of the week. Which school supply is the king of the classroom? The ruler. We hope you guys got some enjoyment out of that very corny school joke. Let's start off the show, though, with some sports news. This is one of the busiest times of the year in the sports world with the NFL playoffs right around the corner, and there are many great games this weekend. So I'm going to break down the games that should be on your radar to watch this coming weekend. First, the 9-7 Indianapolis Colts played the 9-7 Houston Texans on Saturday night. Why is this game important? Well, the winner clinches themselves a postseason berth. It actually has the potential to win their division. A loss means no postseason appearance for either team. A lot is on the line in that one. Second, the 7-9 Atlanta Falcons and the 8-8 eight eight New Orleans Saints face off on Sunday afternoon in a game where the winner could possibly win the NFC South and host a playoff game, while the loser will be eliminated from postseason contention. The Green Bay Packers face the Chicago Bears in a rivalry matchup on Sunday afternoon in a win-it-in-the-postseason type situation for Green Bay, or Chicago looks to win its third straight game. And lastly, the game of the week between the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins, with the winner securing the number two seed and the AFC East title, However, if Buffalo loses and a few other things happen, they miss the playoffs entirely. So a lot's on the line for the Bills and the Dolphins in Miami on Sunday night. You can see every way each team can clinch or get eliminated from the postseason by scanning this QR code right here on the screen or clicking the link in the description. Football is at an all-time high right now. Speaking of football, I recently interviewed the Baltimore Ravens star defensive tackle Justin Matabike, who's recorded 13 sacks and tied the record for most consecutive games with a sack in NFL history. Here were the best parts. Hey, Justin, how you doing? My man. What's up, my man? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, how did you get started? When did you realize you really wanted to be a football player? I would say... <clears throat> in sixth grade sixth grade I did tackle football for the first time and uh, a lot of the coaches that were my teammates my uh, dad you know what I mean like yeah. basically chaperones they were saying I was really really good but I was uh, really uncoordinated just a big guy just throwing my body out there but I was making stuff shake and uh, making plays so that's when I knew I could kind of you know be kind of good at this football thing. Right. Obviously your draft experience was different with it not being in person due to COVID but like what was that draft experience like still hearing your name called going to the NFL? It was awesome. It was a, a dream come true. I, I had visions of Roger Tony Dell saying my name and then when it happened it was crazy. <laughs> I was, it was crazy. I was emotional. It was all types of stuff. I was ready to get to work. It was, it was awesome. It was the Ravens because during the draft process the Ravens were a team that I really like gelled with very well. I had a good vibe with them. You know, you just don't know if they're going to call you or not. You know, right. You're just best so when they called it was um i would say dream come true that's a good word to say and obviously this season though for you it's been a great one right you just tied the record for most consecutive games with at least half a sack with 11 straight games you know you've been playing absolutely amazing football and again this has easily been the best season of your career what did you do in the off season that made it so that now you're a household name and one of the best defensive players in the league well, last year when we lost to the Bengals and uh playoffs when Lamar was out it was Hudley a quarterback I made a almost like a dedication to myself in a sense of I'm going to get like a month and a half to just like see my family relax vacation if I want to and then I'm just gonna work and work and work and take it one day at a time and just maximize every day and train to be a better version of myself than I was the year before and I really just took that deeply within myself to be disciplined to be focused to be sharp-minded and just held accountable for everything that I do. And I feel like when I just kept stacking days, you know I mean? It's kind of like stacking bricks to make a very beautiful house. It just ended up um, turning out pretty nice. And, you know, everybody's seen the hard work, but it's, it was very intentional. It wasn't an accident. And um, it makes me more hungry to keep going, I mean, keep going for a long time. This Ravens team is obviously amazing, but you play with other great teams in the past. But this team, it really seems like something special. You know about this football team what is it that's going on that we're not seeing you know on the television screen that's making this team one that could contend for a super bowl just how much uh, 
uh, these guys in the locker room love each other and just how much we enjoy going to work every single day with each other. You know, it's um, it's obviously a business in that NFL, but uh, everybody in this team, like, we really genuinely care for each other and uh, we, we want the best for each other. So we know that we have so much confidence within each other. So, um, you know, how, how much are you looking forward to this, this final stretch of the year? I'm looking forward to it, man. I mean, this is... This is what football's about, man. These top tier matchups, you know what I mean? Competitors going against the best competitors, cream of the crop. We're going to rise to the top. It's like, if you're not excited about it, it's like you're scared. If you're scared, then what, 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 what are you playing football for, bro? Right. Like, this is the, I mean, people who have regular jobs wish they could do, man. Like, you're living the dream and you want to just be scared? Nah, man, we're not going that way, man. We're the Ravens. We're going to come out with our heads blazing. We're going to come out on fire. And that's just the vibes, bro. That's just the vibes of the quarterback. To, to to D line to offensive line to, to the special teams to skilled players OBJ all these guys you know, we're just fired up we're ready we're humble and hungry. You can find the full interview on the Cool Sports Network found on Apple, Spotify, and Google, and you can view the article I made about Justin Matabike's breakout on the Cool Sports newsletter, aka ChaseCoburg.substack.com. But let's transition away from sports and go to our geopolitical friend Arif Kapoor. What's up, dudes? For today's historical segment, I would like to throw in some This Day in History action, because exactly 91 years ago, on January 5th, 1933, construction on San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge began. This suspension bridge crossing the Golden Gate Strait, which connects San Francisco Bay with the Pacific Ocean, connects the northern tip of the city's northern peninsula to Marin County. The bridge carries U.S. Route 101, running up and down the Pacific coast, along with California State Route 1, as well as a bicycle and pedestrian lane. The idea of a bridge like this to be built began to gain popularity when people realized that the land north of San Francisco Bay and San Francisco itself would increase in value based on its accessibility to the main city. Well, originally, James Wilkins, a journalist and former engineer student, came up with a $100 million plan for this bridge. But this was totally out of the budget. So San Francisco city engineer, Michael M. Oshayugesi, excuse my pronunciation, began looking to see if any other companies would somewhat replicate Wilkins' plan, for, but for cheaper. He eventually found Joseph Strauss, who said he could do it for less money. Ohasi and Strauss settled on a plan that would cost between 25 and $35 million. Despite this agreement, this concept still faced some litigation. And by the time people were ready to begin building, the Great Depression hit. Of course, another thing had to go wrong. But after a bunch of economics that I really don't want to bore you with, construction workers began to dig 3.5 million cubic feet of dirt that needed to be cut out to construct the anchors of this bridge. And with that, you guys know the drill. Peace out, dudes. Over winter break, I went into New York City and saw the Broadway show Back to the Future, the musical. The musical version of the classic 1980s film starring Michael J. Fox, which launched in June of 2023, was absolutely incredible, and I'm going to break down all of the best parts. For starters, the acting. The acting was fantastic. Huge shout out to the lead, Casey Likes, who I personally met after the performance, and he did such an incredible job as Marty McFly with the way he speaks and made his character very similar to the way Michael J. Fox made his nearly 40 years ago. But to me, the top actor had to be Hugh Coles, who did an incredible job playing George McFly with his unconventionally nerdy and dorky style. The show just came to life. The way that the critically acclaimed production differentiates itself from the 30 shows currently performing on Broadway is how it takes advantage of the modern state of technology. Almost every other show on Broadway thrives off its story, acting, music, and props. Back to the Future has all of those things, like a normal Broadway show, while also utilizing the modern state of technology using advanced video systems and lights to elevate the show. Back to the Future is a great family-friendly, modern, and overall amazing show, from the acting to the all-time great story to its video effects and the lights. Personally, it is a top four show I've ever seen, with Tina, the now off-Broadway musical about the artist Tina Turner, Hamilton, about, of course, Alexander Hamilton, and Wicked, a prequel and partial sequel of The Wizard of Oz. Not bad company to be a part of. I would highly recommend checking out the production whenever you come to New York City. Now let's, oh, wait a minute, what's that? We have breaking news.
The boys basketball hype video is out on the Fairfield Woods Middle School YouTube channel, and they have a huge rivalry matchup on Thursday against the defending champions, the Ludlow Bulldogs. And that is going to be live streamed on this channel by the Fairfield Woods announcements team. Be sure to check it out. Now, let's head into rapid fire segments. 60 seconds and ticking. 2023 is done and over, but according to Axios annual analysis on Google Trends, Donald Trump and Taylor Swift held Americans' attention for the most time this year. Axios.com says this data helps capture a widespread from a divided and distracted America. Some other popular trends for good or bad reasons throughout the year included Bill Safety, DeMar Hamlin, Threads, Joe Jonas, Israel, and others. A red alert was reported earlier Monday afternoon by the U.S. Sun that smartphone users have been warned about 17 dangerous apps on their phones. The way the hackers target smartphone users is by using malware. Malware is a file that can infect your phone through various things, such as not secure Wi-Fi. The article suggests ways to avoid this, like downloading antivirus softwares on your phone. A movie that came out over winter break is Iron Claw, which is about the Von Erich family, the family that is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Former high school musical star Zac Efron has even been getting some love for an Oscar playing Kevin Von Erich, as film critic member Jacob Throwberry wrote a movie that has Oscar written all over it on X. The Iron Claws in theaters today. Just ready for Wildcat Wonders, otherwise known as Trivia. You guys will be voting on this on a Google form. You can scan this QR code right here. I'll leave it up now for a few seconds. You can scan the QR code. The link is also in the description for the Google form. You will not be able to cheat. Do not worry. Uh, I got you there, guys. But this is the trivia. How it is going to work, essentially, the winner for each week, month, and for this entire school year will be awarded a prize, so please stay tuned for that. All right, let's start off. How many shows are currently performing or previewing on Broadway? You guys will have to answer that. What day and time do the Miami Dolphins play the Buffalo Bills? How many sacks does Justin Matabike have this season? How many apps are considered dangerous, according to the U.S. Sun? Who is the star actor in Iron Claw? And when did the building of the Golden Gate Bridge start? Those will be questions all on the Google form. And then, again, QR code right here. Scan it. Please view it. And, uh, yeah, again, you have a chance to win. And if you are a homer right now that is not viewing this with a chance to win prizes on this show, what are you doing? Please view this show and be sure to answer our trivia questions to award your homer some prizes. Thank you guys so much for that. All right, so that should do it for the 29th edition of WWMS, our first in 2024. We hope you all enjoyed and learned a thing or two. Alongside RF Kapoor, signing off from the Purple Middle School, I am Chase Cope, and we'll see you next Friday. No, I gotta restart that. I gotta look straight into the camera. Based on its axillary. And action. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. The fact that you hurt yourself I'm using this name. <laughs> We're all gonna be quiet this time. Alright, sure. And again. you need to do your job. Alright, let's go. Not take, the movie. Let's go. Take three. And action. Is that exactly 60? About, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> 60 seconds, baby. Let's go. This is how we do it. All right, peace out, y'all. Now we're going to have to cut it.